I'm Sam Vaknin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. It is common knowledge that brain disorders, injuries and traumas are sometimes misdiagnosed as mental health conditions. But what about run-of-the-mill organic medical conditions? Syphilis provides a fascinating example. Syphilis is a venereal, sexually transmitted disease. It has a few stages and involves unpleasant phenomena such as lesions and skin eruptions. Syphilis can go dormant, latent, for years or even decades before it affects the brain in a condition known as general paresis. Brain tissue is gradually destroyed by the tiny organisms that cause syphilis, the spir spirochetes. This progressive devastation of the brain causes mania, dementia, megalomania, delusions of grandeur, and paranoia. Even when its existence is suspected, syphilis is difficult to diagnose. Most mental health clinicians are unlikely to try to rule it out at all. Syphilis, in its tertiary, brain-consuming phase, produces symptoms that are easily misdiagnosed as bi bipolar disorder combined with narcissistic and paranoid personality disorders. Syphilitic patients in the tertiary, brain-consuming stage are often described as brutal, suspicious, delusional, moody, irritable, raging, lacking empathy, grandiose, and demanding. And if this sounds familiar, that's also a very good description of narcissistic personality disorder. Syphilitic patients are indecisive and absorbed in irrelevant detail one moment and irresponsibly and maniacally impulsive the next. They exhibit disorganized thinking, transient false beliefs, mental rigidity, and obsessive-compulsive repetitive behaviors. Adolf Hitler was remote diagnosed by the famous psychoanalyst Eric Fromm as suffering from narcissistic personality disorder. Fritz Redlich, retired dean of the Yale Department of Psychiatry, published a book titled Hitler, Diagnosis of a Destructive Prophet in 1998. In this book, Redlich describes the final stages of general neurosyphilitic paresis. Quote, signs and symptoms include rapid mental deterioration, psychotic, and usually absurdly grandiose behavior. Page 231. It is easy to confuse tertiary syphilitis, syphilis with uh, personality disorders, especially the narcissistic and paranoid ones. Hey, my name is Anita. And my name is Nick. And we're two teen editors from Sex Etc., the award-winning magazine and website written by teens for teens from Answer, right here at Rutgers University. We're here to talk to you about something important, something I know you've been thinking a lot about, that sexually transmitted diseases, STDs, sometimes called STIs. And Nick, you would not believe some of the stuff that people have heard about STDs. I mean, I've heard that using two condoms, one right on top of another, provides you some sort of extra protection against STDs, but that's totally not true. I've heard that you can catch an STD just by using a public toilet, which, first off, is really gross, and second off, it's totally untrue. So, what are some of the other myths out there? We sent some sex etc. teens out on the street to talk to some teens about what they've heard. Let's take a listen. Hi, I'm Courtney from Sex Etc, a magazine and website for teen sexual health. We're here today wondering what myths people have heard about STDs. I'm wondering what you've heard about STDs. Uh, one myth I've heard is that HIV is transferable through cups, sharing cups and glasses. I heard that if the guy doesn't have sores, you can't catch herpes. Well, I heard that you can't get STDs from oral sex. Is that true? Wow, that's an important one. Lots of people think you can't get an STD by having oral sex, but actually, you can. Right. It is true that the chance of getting or giving someone else an STD while having oral sex is less than if you're having vaginal or anal sex, but it's still risky, especially if you're with someone you don't know very well. You could get herpes, hepatitis B, syphilis, or gonorrhea, to name a few. That's why using latex barriers like condoms or dental dams is so important. And that's what those flavored condoms are for anyway, right? Right. And please don't say that you can tell who has an STD just by looking at them. I mean, the most common symptom of an STD is no symptom at all. Exactly. So, glad we cleared that one up. Let's head back into the field to see what other people have heard about STDs. Hi, I'm Leela from Sex Etc., a magazine and website for teen sexual education. 
We're here to talk about sexually transmitted diseases and stuff that people have heard, whether they're true or not. I'm wondering what kind of sexually transmitted disease myths you've heard. I have actually heard that only people who are gay can get AIDS. Well, I heard that you can't get an STD if you use the condom, right? Well, here's the thing. Using condoms or dental dams, as long as you use them all the time and correctly, really reduces your chances of giving or getting an STD. But of course, since condoms don't cover the entire genital area, it's still possible to transmit an STD even though you may be using a condom or other latex barrier. But they're the best protection we've got if you're not going to choose abstinence. Right, and you just need to make sure that you use them all the time and correctly to give the best protection. Let's watch how that happens. Check the expiration date. Open the package carefully and remove the condom. Make sure the condom tip is pointing up so that it can easily roll down the penis. Pinch the tip of the condom to squeeze the air out. Place the condom on an erect penis and roll it all the way down to the base. Orgasm, ejaculation, and partner's orgasm. Hold on to base of condom and pull out. Carefully remove the condom from the penis, making sure that none of the semen drips out by tying a knot at the end. Throw it away. Never reuse a condom. Okay, glad we got that covered. Let's head back into the field. So what have you heard about STDs? Well, when you have an STD and you get it treated, that means you can't get that STD again, right? And what about you? <laughs> I've heard you can't get an STD if you're on the pill. That's what my friend told me. Okay, so these are two really important myths for us to talk about. I mean, even my friends have been asking me about these ones. I agree. Let's talk about the first myth. You know there are different things that can cause an STD. If it's caused by bacteria, like chlamydia, gonorrhea, or syphilis, you can easily get it cured by taking antibiotics. But that does not mean that you can't get it again. Anytime you have sex with someone who has an STD, you run the risk of getting that STD from that person. Right, Nick. And there are some STDs that are caused by viruses, like HIV and herpes, that stay in your body for life and have to be managed for life. Even though you can't undo the contraction of those viruses, you still need to use protection to prevent getting different strains of the same virus that could cause further health problems. Now let's look at the myth about being on the pill. The pill, just like the patch, the ring, or the shot, are all very effective forms of birth control that help prevent pregnancy. None of them, however, provide any protection against STDs. Right. The only 100% effective way of avoiding STDs is to not have vaginal, oral, or anal sex. But if someone chooses to have any of these types of sex anyway, using latex or polyurethane condoms or dental dams is the only way to prevent the risk of getting an STD. Right. So let's check in with our team one last time to see if there are any other good myths for us to talk about. Hi, I'm Laura from Sex Etc., a website and magazine for teens to receive sex education. We're here today to find out some of the sex myths that teens have been hearing about STDs. A myth that I've heard about STDs is that um, you know when you have an STD when the symptoms are obvious. I heard that they test girls by giving them pap smears and guys by like shoving stuff up their um, things. Is that true? This sounds like a good time to talk about testing. Yeah, that's right, testing. You know, I can't tell you how many teens say, I'm not going to get tested because I'm afraid it will hurt. Or, I, if I have an STD, I don't want to know about it. But it's not really a big deal to get tested. Depending on the symptoms, a healthcare provider might start with a physical exam of the genitals, take a urine sample, test fluid from the vagina, anus, or throat, or take some blood. Right. And you can't just assume that your doctor or clinician is just going to automatically test you for everything. You can ask what STDs they're actually testing you for. And please, just get tested. I know it's hard and scary to think about having an STD, but most of them can be cured, and those that can't be cured can at least be treated. Having sex is a big deal, and we want to be responsible about it. Having sex without knowing your STD status, especially with someone you don't know, is just purely irresponsible. Well, Anita, we're just about out of time. All this talk about STDs is making me hungry. <laughs> let's head to lunch. Well, before we sign off, let's make sure our viewers know that they can get honest, accurate sexual health information about STDs and a whole bunch of other topics by going to our website, sexetc.org. Good idea. Be sure to visit us at sexetc.org to help us expose the myths about STDs. Thanks for joining us, and stay safe.